Genesis, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 12. And I want to just back up uh, to a verse here that we've sort of addressed. <clears throat> I'd like to make sure that we um, are getting the full impact. And I will probably have to do a little bit of drawing, so I shall prepare this for the future, should it come. Okay, <clears throat> verse 10. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And so, uh, just a reminder, and maybe I will just start with uh, <clears throat> the the picture that we have, and that is we had the, um, I think you're will, well aware of the, uh, I guess I'll put it in here, the PS, which is the prodigal son. <laughs> and uh, he, he went, he left, he, he spent all of the inheritance, and that's important. The inheritance goes to the heir, and the double portion goes to the firstborn. <clears throat> he received that before there was a death. There was no acknowledgement of the cross as the avenue whereby inheritance comes. So there was no death in him and there was no death of the father. And um, so he goes and he spins it all. So there's that, that first point where it's all spent. Um, but then the progression is that a famine comes along. And the famine comes along when he has spent it all. Okay, so you have to understand, he's got nothing, then the famine comes. Okay, so we say, well, if I get down to nothing, then God will be able to deal with me. Well, when you got down to nothing here, then he brings a famine. So, you know, in other words, we think that's the, our lowest point. I've got nothing. This means that I'm particularly open for spiritual things. And he goes, well, how about a, how about a famine? <clears throat> and then from the famine, it's hog pen time. All right, so we've seen that progression and we've, we've looked at it over and over. We also noted that um, in Egypt, um, the children of Israel, so we'll just call it Israel, they apparently, if you will, had spent all because they didn't have food and a grievous famine had come. So you could, maybe these are joined in this scenario, maybe they're not. Maybe the Lord did the same thing here and brought them down, then sent the famine. It doesn't say specifically. But the end result of that is <clears throat> that they also experience a famine. And it drives them into Egypt. Or you could call it the hog pen or whatever. But it was a foreign land and it was, um, it was like not where they belonged. That it was not their land, their home. <clears throat> and so then we're reading now with Abraham. And so the big A comes into the land, but in a sense, he had, uh, whether you would say he spent all or not, um, he had just left his father's land and his relatives and everything that he knew and all that was comfortable to him in Haran. And basically, there was a big loss there. 
So then, shortly after he gets there, there's a famine. <clears throat> and the famine does what to him? Sends him into EGYPT. I, I have a comment I could make, but I won't. Because I'm, I'm maturing. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing like that? <laughs> what? Okay. I'm on to you, people. <laughs> I'm on to you. <clears throat> All right. So um, we see this pattern, and we're going to see it again and in other parts of Genesis. We're going to see this same pattern. <clears throat> but as I was meditating on this, the Spirit of God reminded me of Jesus uh, in uh, Matthew 13. So let's turn there, and I want to... I want to just show you a few things here. And some of it, some of you have been around for a while. You've heard at least portions of this, if not all of it. But <clears throat> I think it's worthy of being brought forth because the Holy Spirit brought it up. <laughs> and I went, well, it's worthy if he thinks it's worthy. Matthew chapter 13. And it begins this way. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Now the next verse, I'm going to leave out, I'm going to read the first three words and then leave out the next one, two, three, four, five, six. They're, it's not important to what I want to share, so just let me read verse three with those leaving those out. Well, let me read those, and then I'll read it without. And he spake, and he spake, talking about Jesus, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Okay, so I want to just read this, taking out those words. And he spoke, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. All right, well, here's what the, th the, <clears throat> the Spirit of God impressed upon me was, the same day Jesus goes out of a house, he goes by the seaside, there's a great multitude gathered together, he gets in a ship, he sat, and the whole multitude, so I'm, again, he tends to visualize a lot of this to me, so I'm, I'm seeing Jesus standing in that boat, or sitting, I don't know, did it say he sat? Yeah, okay, good, that's smart, because you don't want to, anyway, <laughs> and, and he's, he's sitting down, and this great multitude is there. And the next words that I read to you is, and he spake, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And I saw the sower sitting in that boat, and I saw the ground right before him. Amen? Because that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about seeds and agriculture and all this kind of stuff. He's talking about, and he'll, he does go on to explain that this is, this is God, and this is the sowing of the, the word of God into us, and so that there would be an increase. And so, <clears throat> so, so I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm going, okay, he's literally doing what he's preaching. And he is literally, the real thing is going on while the explanation is going on. <clears throat> And you, a person could focus on the explanation or on the actual thing. They could become good ground. Then I guess I should read the rest of this, but amen? So let's go ahead and read the rest of this. Verse 4. <clears throat> and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell among stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others, other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So he's saying this. 
And there's much more as it gives the explanation, but this is, <clears throat> there, there is a, a, a um, living demonstration of it, and there is a teaching demonstration of it. Which do you want? Okay, so do we stand on the shore and, you know, Jesus is over there and he's sitting in the boat and he's talking and, and are we going, you know, oh, I got to hear this. I got to, you know, I need to get this. I, you know, this is really good teaching. I got to get this. Or are we saying he's talking about us? He's sowing seed right now into us. Sow your seed, Lord. Fill up this ground. I want to be good ground. I don't want to be hard ground because I'm focused on the teaching. I want to be focused on you. You know, a, a sower went forth. Oh, yeah. Or there he is. And he's doing it right now. And he's trying to make a difference. And I'm not talking about me being that sower. I'm, I'm talking about the Lord. The Spirit of God is here. And the Lord is here to sow his seed in you. And you can focus on the teaching or the teacher or the situation um, or the, the, the presentation, the presentation. Or you can, <clears throat> you can set your heart to say, I am here, Lord, as your ground, and I want to be good ground. And the best way to be good ground isn't to focus on the teaching. Now, the, yes, it's going to build, the, it, it will be in you, but wouldn't you rather have it be in you as life than teaching? <clears throat> you know, and, you know, somebody could, could take those scriptures or any scriptures and so study them and so figure out all this stuff and so get it all down and go, you know, look, look, you know, and you're looking at the teaching instead of saying, this represents him and the real is him and his heart, and this is where we should focus. But we can get all caught up in the teaching, amen? amen. And that's not what the Lord wants. That's not what I want. <clears throat> and I don't believe that's what anybody here wants either. But so I, I'm, 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 I'm watching Jesus, and I'm thinking, you know, the actual thing is going on. But he is teaching, okay? And there's nothing wrong with teaching. We let the Spirit of God take that and break it and do it into us. But it's the real one, the one sitting in the boat we're after. And the reality of what he's trying to do right now, going, oh, that was a good teaching tonight, wasn't it? Oh, you know? Let's just rejoice over how good that was. Or let's say, my God, the sower was sowing into me. <laughs> he, was, he was doing it. He was putting it in there. And I know that because see, Jesus, nobody does this. Jesus made farmers and he made agriculture and he made seed and he made all of that kind of stuff. Uh, at creation, all that kind of stuff came forth. But... Jesus knows that you don't take seed, throw it in there, and it immediately grows. It's a big apple tree. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. But seeds do go in. But you have to be ground that is there for the seed because that's what this parable is about. Did you ever notice that? I mean, the first one is, uh, let's see. Some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And his explanation of that is that the devil comes and steals the seeds out of your heart. Okay? Well, okay, do you believe he can steal the teaching from you? Do you believe that you can have the best teaching in the world, not that you're getting that here, but you, you, you could find that place, and you could have the best teaching in the world and not even remember it the next day. You go, somebody goes, wasn't that good? And you go, what was that? <laughs> you know? uh, how did that go? Yeah, it had something to do with famine or something like that, you know? But our, our heart, our heart, our hearts are into this. Amen. Not just our minds. 
and our, our, our focus <clears throat> is the, the man in the boat, not the, teach, the man in the teaching. And besides, um, we could hear that teaching and our whole focus could be us. And here's what we would say. Oh, oh he's telling us a parable and he sowed seed and, and, and some are good ground. And I know I'm good ground. Because we would all say that. But is that necessarily true? You know. How, uh, however, we can have our focus on him. And we can say, sower, Jesus, you pour your seed into me. You put the living reality of you in me and make it real and you may not remember the teaching but you'll remember if he did that i mean it's like this is this is life that that's life and you know and you'll never forget that and there are, i mean I've, there are things all through my years i'll never forget that when he spoke it was it was not teaching it was life and it transformed me and it transformed the scripture because the scripture just said da 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 da, but when he when it became life, I saw the life of the thing, and not just trying to get hold of something. I I want to be spiritual. I want to share spiritual things. That's not the way to be spiritual. And the the beauty of this is is that he's trying to show us the way to be spiritual, if you will. Okay, so. He says, uh, and of course, the, by the wayside, the fowls of the air came. So you see the attack of the enemy, right? You see it? What's the enemy attacking? The seed. He's not going, the enemy, the fowls are not going to the ground and going, eh, eh, I attack you, dirt. <laughs> you know, it's trying to get the seed out of you. He's not after you. He's not afraid of you. You're just dirt. You're an earthen vessel. You have a treasure in you. Amen? You have treasure. Okay, how much do we treasure the treasure? It's no, it does no good to have definitions and not life. I have a treasure. I have the treasure in me. Okay? But do we treasure him enough to say, I, wanna, I want the man in the boat, and I want the seed that is him in me and that's where my focus is and and holy spirit take what he's teaching and use that but my focus is on a him not on an it and that's where i'm going to stay and nobody's going to move me off of that because my heart is fixed i am set on jesus I shall not be, I shall not be moved. <laughs> Just like a tree planted by the waters. So then the next one is that uh, some fell in stony places. Stony places. That means that it's not just dirt. It's got rocks and stuff in there. It's got things blocking Blocking the seed. Can you believe that? And it's not the devil. Okay, well, how, how do you get rid of that? You make your focus the Lord. You don't get rid of it by fighting the stones. You don't. You get it by seeking the Lord. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that when you look into his face, you will be changed into that same image from glory to glory. It doesn't say, um, it, this, Jesus said of himself, if I be lifted up, and this spoke he of the manner of death, he should die. If I be lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men unto me. He didn't say if you put down Adam, if you put down sin, if you put down what's wrong, if you put down the president, or you put down this or that, or you always fighting against her. It's anti everything except for what I treasure, you know. Then... You're not going to get rid of You're actually adding to the stones. See. If I be lifted up, and that 
words which he spoke pertain to him being lifted up at the cross. That's where everything was taken away. And now he's not a man in the boat. Now he's the man on the cross. Now he's the answer. Now he's, he's the answer to the devil. He's the answer to sin. He's the answer to the world. He's the answer to uh, my problems and your problems, even if they're very different. He's the answer to all of that. But if that's really true, why wouldn't we just get so focused that it's, it's like we have blinders on like horses. So the, when they're horse racing, they don't get distracted by what's going on. They're just looking at what's in front of them, going for the, the finish line. And, and Jesus, I just want you. If I never change, well, that's how you change. <laughs> don't you get it? That is how you change. But what a great heart that says, if I never change, I'm going after you. That's my heart. That's my commitment. That's where I stand. Devil, knock me around if you want. My compass is going to go and then point back to him. But I'm coming after you, Lord. It looks like I got a gun. <laughs> You're kidding, Jesus. <clears throat> Okay, so then he says, um, uh, the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. So, so this thing about getting exciting about Jesus in the boat teaching, because remember, this is still the, that, that situation. For us, it's a story. For them, they were the multitude. They were the different kinds of ground, and he's the sower sowing right there at that very minute. And some are grabbing stuff and go, oh, oh, this is exciting. Look, it sprung up in me. Look what sprung up. You know? Beware of fast growth. Good old solid, steady growth is the best. Just keep going like a tank. Just keep going. <laughs> Rolling over this and going for, you know, all the obstacles that come. Just keep your, your gaze there. And, you know, it's like, okay, so I'm coming up on this old beat-up house, and I was looking at Jesus, but now the house is blocking my way. Well, I'm that tank that I remember where he was at. I go straight through that old beat-up house. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm, I've stood looking at the object that I want long enough that I know he hadn't just run off all of a sudden in another direction. had not much earth so they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and so okay did the dirt wither away no okay uh, <clears throat> maybe maybe that dirt from then on can go man i remember the day and Lord, the seed came in me, and it sprung up to new life. It was just, it grew up fast, man. It was glorious. And, I, you know, I want to give my testimony, tell that story over and over and over. Same old thing instead of, how about your mercies are new every morning? I mean, that simple verse some of you know how the Lord dealt with me on that years and years ago. I mean, I read it and I went, oh, my God, instead of looking at what he's done, I can, I can know that his mercies are new. There are new mercies today. And I can be with him in that. And, of course, you know mercies and meanings and stuff like that. But. Just that reality that every morning, I'm with you then. See, you see what I mean? It's like, I'm not with the mercies. I'm with you every morning. Focus, people. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up. Okay, so there you have it. 
The seed was sown, and, and yet what sprang up? The thorn sprang up. Among the seed, yeah, but they choked, not the dirt, not the earth, not the soil. The thorns choked the seed. All right. So, uh, the next one is good ground. Some fell into good ground, and it produced some 30, some 60, 100 fold. So, we look at the, we look at the situation and you hear so many different preachers and things emphasize different parts of different teaching and everything. And a lot of times, you know, it's, it's maybe their experience or maybe something that they believe is really it. For example, the, you could say, okay, here's the dirt and the sower comes out. And so whether he's got a big old plow or he just takes a shovel, and he takes that shovel and he starts breaking up the ground. And the ground was hard, but he starts breaking it up the ground. Well, the Lord, the one with the shovel, the one with the seed that he wants to deposit, he doesn't walk away and go, oh, thank God, the ground is broken now. There's brokenness in it. This is what I wanted. I just wanted them to come to brokenness. Ah, now let's talk about the famine. Let's talk about the famine. Okay. So all, every one of these came to the famine. And every one of them came to an end. And every one of them uh, uh, went through this thing where they felt broken. And that this is it. And you hear some preacher say, you know, God wants you to be broken. Well, yes, but that's not all. He's, what is the purpose of brokenness? Why would a, a farmer break up the ground. He's doing it because the seed's what Im is important. And he wants to put that seed in there. And he wants that seed to bring forth, not the ground. You bear it, but he brings it forth. So you have the prodigal son, or you have Abraham, or Israel. <clears throat> and you have them, you know, at a certain stage, victorious. You have the prodigal son going out with all of this, and, and, and he's, you could say he's blessed of God. You have Israel before the famine, blessed of God. They, now they're possessing the land. They're possessing the land. You have Abram, who just heard from God just before this famine, <clears throat> and God just told him, you know, this is it. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be about your seed possessing the ground. That's what he said. <laughs> so what's the next thing God does to Abraham? The next thing he does is bring a famine. In the light of all the beauty of the seeds going to bring forth in this ground, this dry ground, he sends a famine. And like with the prodigal son, okay, so he's lost all now. And now the famine comes, and then the famine comes, and he's in the hog pen. And all that process, particularly around the famine and what follows, all that process is trying to do, and like with Abraham, is to say, I, you know, it's like Jesus sitting in the boat, and Abram's one of the multitudes, and he says, the seed will fill the land. It'll possess the land. And Abraham listens to the teaching and goes, Oh, yes. Praise God. You know, this is, this is where it's at. And then goes into famine. Why would God do that? Why would God mess with him at the height of, so far, the height of his trip in, into the land. He would mess with him to say, I'm trying to teach you through the famine 
and through your experience in Egypt that you are not the seed. You are not the firstborn. You are not the one I'm after. I'm not looking for broken dirt. I'm not looking for hard dirt. I'm not looking for dirt in that sense. I'm looking for my seed. And so I'm looking for ground that will deem itself um, specifically for the seed. That's why I exist. <laughs> specifically for the seed. That's why I exist. Um, God has no other purpose, you know, because we go, well, he wants to make me a great evangelist, or he wants to make me a great, you know, da-da-da-da, or he wants to do this and that. But, but the Father's plan is my firstborn son. What's the first thing happens to you when you get saved? He puts Jesus on the inside of you. Now he wants to grow. But we say, we go, um, oh, you know, I'm growing so much in the Lord. I'm growing. I really am. I'm really making some progress here. Uh, and the Lord's going, well, stop it. Because <laughs> you know? I, I really don't need more dirt. I don't need more dirt. I, that, that's not my plan. My plan is take the seed that I give you and, and make yourself an environment for that seed. That's called good ground. That's what good ground is. Do you realize that? Because all the other grounds were not good ground for the seed. <clears throat> all right. So the sower and the seed is sitting in that boat. And he knows. He knows. You know, I know what I'm sowing to you right now, and I know what the Father wants out of you, which is the guy in the boat in your ground, <laughs> if you understand. You know, obviously Christ and him crucified, his nature. <clears throat> but that's what, he knows what this is about. He's, he's not going, whoo, we got some big multitudes here. Christianity's going to spread like crazy. It's really good. I'm doing a great job here. You know, I'm a successful preacher. <clears throat> He's not, that's not in his heart or mind or, you know, it's in, it seems to be in so many people's heart and mind, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep growing until I become super effective. <clears throat> How about I, okay, so let's try, let's try this. Let's try this. What did I do with that chart? There it is. Did I spell it right? All right, we hear this verse all the time. He must increase and I must decrease. When is it going to become practical? It has to become something that we're involved in. It has to become a place where <clears throat> this is what I'm working toward. This is the dirt. I am working not to be the focal point. Okay, so the farmer, when he first starts, and the field's all overgrown and, and hard and rocks and everything, and he comes in and he plows it and he throws all the rocks out and he digs up all the bad roots and everything, and all of that work has really done nothing except make an environment for the seed. In his mind, dirt, even though I'm giving you all this attention... <laughs> It's not about you, Abraham, so I'm going to send you into famine land, you know. I'm going to send you into, into hog pen time. Because you need it. You need it because you still think that you understand what's going on and who is the what of this situation. And you don't know. I'm still just digging and pulling junk out and dealing with the seed hadn't even showed up yet. 
you know. And he's going, oh, praise God, the Lord just spoke to me. And there's a famine. We better get out of here. We better get out of the promised land. <laughs> because he, he's, he turns the promised land into the unpromised land to you. That's what the famine does. Uh, this is not the promised land. No, it is, but it's not your promised land. That's what you have to wake up to. That's what the Spirit of God has to say. So, so the sower is here among us, and he's also here as the seed, right? So is this a, a great teaching tonight? <laughs> Come out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> or are we tuning in to him right now? And we're saying that yes to, to him, yes to, to you, Jesus, yes to what you're saying. And what the main yes is, I'm dirt and he's the seed. The main yes is, I must decrease. Why? I, because the process is that I want an increase of him, not an increase of me. So every... Every act, way before the seed shows up, every act that God's doing with Abraham, everything from plowing to getting down on his knees, because back in those days, that's how you did it, getting down on your knees and pulling weeds out. And the dirt goes, oh, I've been needing that filthy ragweed pulled out of me. <laughs> you know, thank you, Jesus. He saw my, my need, and he came, and he touched me, you know? And he, you know, and, we're, and so we're all into that. Oh, I'm increasing now. Now it's happening. God is finally recognizing my true worth. Yeah, dirt. I just need some dirt, okay? <laughs> but it needs to be good ground, meaning it needs to be specifically set aside for the seed and the seeds increase. In other words, in the mind of that dirt, it's saying, I am decreasing in my understanding of how important I am. And the, the seed, the, the firstborn is increasing in my understanding of what's important. It's not about, you know, <clears throat> I mean, he could... You know, he, 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 he could bring in fertilizer and the ground could, you know, it could react and say, well, this is stinky. What's the point of this? Or it can say, well, thank God, this is going to really bring, you know, nutrients and stuff like that. Every emphasis that we have concerning us as the dirt, except we don't think of ourselves as the dirt, tends toward th thoughts of increase. It tends toward what he's doing in me. And, you know, when, when Paul said, I am crucified, nevertheless I live, yet not I, he's replacing you <laughs> as important. All right. Well, we all go, well, <laughs> doesn't Jesus still love me? <laughs> you yeah. know? Well, he loves you because you're, you're in union with Christ. So then Jesus comes along and he starts talking about the, the vine and the branches. And he says, abide in me and I in you and you shall bring forth fruit. Right? He's saying basically all you are is an attachment to me in a spiritual way that, that says, my life is you, so fill me. And the results of that are all his. But if our life is down here measured by how much we're increasing, when we should be decreasing, then we're totally off kelter. We've missed the boat. <laughs> Where'd the boat go? <laughs> Where'd Jesus go? <laughs> he paddled off. He heard what you were thinking. <laughs> he 
was he was getting your emphasis. So he he, he took. In fact, he put a, a motor on the back of it. <laughs> you know. Because our emphasis, we keep we keep doing this, folks. We keep doing this. It makes me so anyway. <laughs> it just is 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 this thing where the the weeds are choking the seed and all we see is that they're cho the thorns are choking me and it's not and we see that the fowls of the air are attacking me and we're saying lord deliver me from the these demons that are attacking me and lord get them off of me and lord help me and and i'll 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 be everything you want if you'll just get rid of all this stuff you know and then even if he gets it all cleaned up and all the weeds are out and all the fouls of the air are gone and all the rocks are, are gone and stuff, if we still sit there and say, oh, he cleaned me up and now I'm better than that plot of ground over there, then we start comparing ourselves with different parts of the field, you know. And we're going, man, the Lord's really been at work in me. You, you notice he spent way more time over here. It's because you needed it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> leaven, as we looked at it, was it was that which is is puffed up, that which is considering itself, that which is increasing, and that spirit has to go. It has to go. It has to go. You know. But how does it go? Okay. Well, we here's here's our here's our way out. Well, it goes by the cross. The precious cross will take care of it. You know. Well. How about you stand against a spirit of increase in yourself and you say, all I want is more of Jesus, less of me. But, but we sing that, you know. We sing stuff like that, but are we just singing? You know, in other words, is that just like a sermon? Now we're singing, but the person in the boat, we're missing that, and we're missing the person that is the reality of why we're doing that. Instead of just singing, you know, you know, I don't even remember how the song goes, he must increase and I must decrease, and we're singing that more of Jesus, less of me. So we go, more of Jesus, less of me. Uh, you know, how about, I think I'm, there's a lot of me coming out right now, <laughs> come to think of it, because I noticed somebody looked over here, just glanced in my direction, I had to close my eyes and went, <gasps> I'm serious. You see this? I'm serious. You know, you know, <laughs> and it's it's this it's the spirit that gets us and that tries to put on a show for others, and especially the ones that we want to impress. And we're we're not trying to impress anybody except Jesus, and we're not trying to impress Him with us. Yeah. We're trying to impress Him with this thing called decrease. I, Jesus, I'm in the decrease so that you can, I'm in the increase so that you can increase, and I want to get out of the way, and I want to have that, that leaven, that puff thing that thinks of itself more highly than it ought, and that is pursuing, uh, improving the land so that people will notice the land, the dirt, instead of the life, because dirt has no life in it except the seed. Isn't that beautiful? That's it. So if any fruit comes up, <clears throat> that's his fruit. But if we're working it, anybody know what it means to work it? <laughs> Some of you have been working it, girl. <laughs> well, you know, stop working it. 
stop working the system. Stop, stop thinking you're working people. Well, you know, these people um, really accept me because I'm, you know, I know the terminology. I studied hard. And I got all the terminology down, and I can banter it. Okay, I think, you know, some of y'all remember when we first started as a church, and I said, <coughs> I said, if somebody stood up in the church, and they were a brand new Christian, and all they knew was Jesus saves, and they stood up and they just said, Jesus saves. I said, if it's real, I said, that's every bit as good as anything deep anybody would share, because it's real, it's him, it's the life effect, the effect of life on a person. That's what I want. That's what the Lord wants. That's what I'm looking for, and, and I want that in me. I want it in me. I, in fact, I want it in me more than I want it in you. Well, sometimes. <laughs> most, most of the time, I think. But, you know, when I'm at home. <laughs> when I get around you, I don't know. It kind of shifts. <clears throat> but there is this. <laughs> but, I mean, part of the deal is, and this is the truth, we're having to deal with all this other stuff in other people, too. And as my wife was sharing with me today, but I'm going to stay focused on the Lord. I'm going for the no matter what has this or that. I can't stop. This is my path. I've got to go after the Lord. Didn't you say stuff like that? <clears throat> Instead of getting tripped up and, and down, you know, oh, I failed. That's, that's the purpose of the the hog pen time you need to be there long enough that when you come out you're not going father i'm home and i won't fail again <laughs> that's the last thing he wants to hear yeah he says hog pen time just got increased uh, yeah <laughs> So, you know, and that, that's, but what did he come back? He came back and he says, Father, I'm not worthy to be called thy son. And the father goes, praise God. Now it's going to be my firstborn. Now it's the one that's already in you because you're in the family. And you're going to find out about him. And he'll increase. And you've already decreased enough to know it in you. And to know it's not really about you. So that our hearts can be set on Jesus in all things. So that our hearts can cannot worry about the, the the trip or the fall or the mess up. And when I say not worry about, I'm just saying it's not that you, when you do that, you know. I used to use this example. You know, <clears throat> when you're a kid and you're teaching you to ride the bicycle. Remember your parents maybe or somebody's helping you learn. And so they're holding on to the back and they're pushing you. And then they're, pedal, let's go. You know, no. And then you let go and they go, oh, 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 you know, and it's shaking like that and stuff like that. And then finally, and then you grab it again, but then they get going pretty good and you let go and, you know, and they're going, oh, and bam, they smash into a hedge or something, you know, and fall down and they go, I can't do it. I can't ride a bicycle. I'll never get on that thing again. Get up, soldier. <laughs> get up. Dust yourself off and get back on that thing. We're going. We, we found new transportation, and you're going to enjoy it. <clears throat> See how mean I, I was to three little girls? Actually, they all had great balance. So that they didn't really, didn't really need a lot of help. Amen. Well, I better stop this madness. <clears throat> but, but you know that I just want to say thank you to the Holy Spirit because um, that spirit. <clears throat> seen in Jesus in the boat and, and the wording there um, 
I'm going to read it one more time. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And I'm just looking at the sower sowing, and I was so overwhelmed with the beauty of that picture and, and of the contrast of it from the words of his mouth and him being the sower, uh, a message compared to the reality of it going on right that minute. Don't trade in Jesus for a message, people. Don't do it. Let's pray. Father, we just come in Jesus' name, and there is a hunger in our hearts and a desire to, to know you, Jesus, beyond our classes beyond our church services. <clears throat> we want you to fill every ounce of our life. We want you not just in, in Sunday services or whatever. We want you to spread out. We want you to increase and start taking over more ground in us <clears throat> and not just making you a once a week thing or twice a week or however many times, but but all day, every day, you are our life, and you are our seed, and you are the sower that is putting that in us, and you are wonderful to be that to us when we gather so that we're not just getting teaching, but we are getting that which will increase, has the life ability to increase in us the seed, your seed, you. So we love you. We do need you, but we look beyond our need to your need to fill us and to be that firstborn to the Father, to the glory of the Father. So continue to move in that manner. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Bless you guys.